Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode 109 of Be With Me. We're in Acts chapter 17, and Paul and Silas and Timothy and Luke are getting some persecution. They're in Thessalonica uh, at the proximal end of the Greek peninsula, and they're in Thessalonica, and Jews have stirred up a mob uh, they actually started the mob by finding some wicked men of the rabble, and they make an uproar. And remember, they get mad at an idea, and what a what a mob is, is they attack unrelated things. So I used the analogy yesterday of being mad at some politics, and so you burn down a grocery store that has nothing to do with it. So that's what they do up in Thessalonica. They leave as we find out here in verse 10. This is Acts 17.10. The brothers in Thessalonica immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. Berea is about 50 miles away. So a couple days journey. And when they arrived, they went into the Jewish synagogue. Now these Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They received the word with all eagerness examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Many of them therefore believed, with not a few Greek women of high standing as well as men. But when the Jews from Thessalonica, this is a different town now, learned that the word of God was being proclaimed by Paul at Berea also, they came there too, agitating and stirring up the crowds, They came 50 miles to stir up a crowd. 14. Then the brothers immediately sent Paul off on his way to the sea, but Silas and Timothy remained there. Those who conducted Paul brought him as far as Athens, and after receiving a command for Silas and Timothy to come to him as soon as possible, they departed. So Paul goes 222 miles down the the, uh, Greek coast, and probably by boat, and ends up in Athens at the end of the story. All right, so we have these, uh, the bad people in this particular story are uh, jealous Jews from Thessalonica. They're 50 miles away, and they uh, made a riot in Thessalonica and did a pretty darn good job of it, ran, uh, ran those guys out of town. And then when they found out that they were 50 miles down the road at another town, they come down and again try to stir things up, uh, agitating and stirring up the crowds. So that's kind of what generates some of the action and the motion of the of the story. But the, the fun thing in this story is the noble behavior that the, that the uh, Bereans d- display. And that is when a new idea comes to town, and this is what makes them noble, is how they approach the new idea. So rather than having a riot over an idea and just a, in general anger, they specifically get to the point and they start to consider it and rather than throw Molotov ca- cocktails at it, uh, they give the idea uh, a chance rather than a riot. So here's what describes their spiritual nobility. It's all in one sentence. Let me just read it now. The Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They received the word with all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were were so. So let me break this down. Number one is they made a place, an entrance for the word to come in. In other words, they were receptive. Secondly, they were eager about it. They received it with some enthusiasm. But, but, you know, we have to be careful about our, our ideas. And so they're, they are cautious, cautious. They examine this uh, idea rather than just, you know, cutting it off and lighting something on fire. And what did they do? They were humble. They, they went to a source that had been around for about 2,000 years, a fully formed Old Testament, which is just a masterpiece of of. Uh, God's uh, impact on, on the world, it's knowing that you're not the first person to ever, you know, walk this walk. You know, a book collected 
by people after being written by the inspiration of God through people with no uh, errors in its original languages and preserved over uh, not just decades, but centuries and millennia. So that's what they do. They, they examine Paul's new idea with this great authoritative source that they have. And then they do it uh, regularly by by examining this daily and this pattern of regularity. Um, and why do we need, you know, not just on Sundays or whatever, why do we need to listen to uh, Be With Me uh, on a daily basis? Why is this a daily podcast? Well, because we are mere men and we are mere women at best. And we are prone to wander and we need to keep... Uh, uh, throwing mud on the spiritual wall, if you will, to keep ourselves from being wandering and getting funny ideas in our head and just keeping it according to thy word. Thy word I have treasured into my heart that I may not sin against you. And then the last thing that they do is they believe. So they assess these ideas eagerly and receive them and daily and with uh, a humility by going to a source, and then they finally believe. So there's this doctrine, which I learned about in my little commentary, called the doctrine of the clarity of scriptures, which is that the scriptures, for the most part, are to be, the, are, are to be understood by people that examine them. So we have a God that wants to be known. How does he choose to be known? By, by the preaching of his word and by his written word. And so you and me, as a layman, I'm not a pastor, can go to the scriptures and and rip them apart a little bit and think about them and cross-reference them. And, and this doctrine of the clarity of the scriptures is that civilians can do this. So you don't have to be uh, seminary trained, and that's what the Bereans do. All right, so the conclusions are, number one, uh, make an entrance for the word. That is, be receptive. Number two, be eager. Number three, be cautious. Examine the examine the scriptures. Go to a good source, rather than some you know pop media kind of thing. Number four, be humble. Use the authority of of scripture. Know that you're the you know that you are human and you need. Uh, a good authoritative source, which is the Old Testament scriptures, and now we get the New Testament as well. Number five, be regular. Do this daily because we forget quickly. And then finally, if you can, be a believer. Thank you for listening. Thank you for doing this regularly. I hope to see you tomorrow.